Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about shape memory polymers, specifically different material models that can capture the response of a shape memory polymer. So first of all, what is a shape memory polymer? Well, it's a material that can return from a deformed state when exposed to some external uh, different environment, typically temperature change. And the image at the bottom kind of shows a little bit how this works. You have a deformed shape that you generate at an elevated temperature, and then you cool it down, and this state is then frozen into the material. And it's almost magical how it can return to some other state simply by increasing the temperature. And this can have a lot of interesting industrial applications. What I want to talk about today is how can we model this? It's just difficult to create a material model that can capture, or, and how does that work? So that's really the, the purpose here. So to do that, I will use M calibration. It turns out it's very easy to predict this kind of shape changing behavior using a material model and exploring that in M calibration. So let's get started. Here is a, a brand new window of M calibration. And the typical way to do this is to select the material model and work with different load cases. In this case, I will use a very simple material model. I will use the Bergstrom Boys model that works well for, for various polymers. And uh, if you select that in M calibration, there are different versions of it. We have the polyumod version, the abacus, the ANSYS, etc. version of this Bergstrom Boys model. But for this to work with a shape memory polymer, we need to make it temperature dependent. And uh, the easiest way to do that um, here is, is to use a template feature within the M calibration software. So I have already set that up and I'm going to show you how that looks. So here's an example uh, where I have set this up. I'm going to talk about the material model first here at the bottom. It says polyuma template. So this is a temperature dependent version of the Bergstrom Boys material model. Uh, the polyumod version of it. And here if I open this, we'll see that it's a template that has certain parameters listed here. You can read a little bit about this format using the help on format uh, function here. It simply is a, uh, simply saying that the, in this case, we will have three temperatures and they are specified by these variables T1, T2, and T3 that we can change. You can kind of see them at the bottom left here. And then we have one set of parameter, parameters for each of these temperatures. And then the software will interpolate the parameters at intermediate temperatures. That's how you create a temperature-dependent Bergstrom Boys model in this example. I, I set some of these parameters to default values here, or we will change them in the main window. So that's why we have them here. I set the lowest temperature be 20 C. Then the intermediate temperature will be 60 degrees centigrade and the highest to be 100. So those are the three temperatures for which we have material parameters. And then I have the parameters for each of these temperatures here. Temperature 1, temperature 2, and temperature 3. And these are the parameters that I have selected for this example. You can now very easily change them, obviously. The next thing uh, we need to do is to set up some load cases. Here, I am demonstrating different material models. I don't have experimental data that I want to use. I'm going to instead use virtual experiments. So I go to the first one here. It's a temperature tension test followed by unloading at a given temperature. So it's virtual experiment and it's at 20 degrees C. And I'm pulling it with constant strain rate to a 50% engineering strain. And then I unload it with the same strain rate uh, to zero stress. And I do this in three different temperatures. So if I select this material model and, and I run this virtual test, we'll see what it looks like. I click run once. And here are the stress strain predictions. These are true stress, true strain predictions for these different cases. The blue curve is the room temperature, intermediate temperature, and then the high temperature response. So this is a hypothetical ma material response, but we can see that the response looks pretty reasonable based on what we have, would expect for a uh, thermoplastic or soft material like that. Now, let's take a look at the shape memory effect that we really want to focus on here. So I have a load case here that I set up. I'm going to turn off these and I'm going to open this shape memory effect load case. And this is also a virtual experiment. And this is something that's really interesting that you can do so quickly and easily in M calibration. I have six different segments here in which I ask M calibration to perform this cycle of events that we're interested in. So first step here is to simply just pull on this 
to 50% strain with a given strain rate. But I do this at the high temperature. So this is the, the whole idea of a, a shape memory deformation. I do it at high temperature. And the, the temperature I do it at 100 degrees C in this example. And then I ramp the temperature down while I keep the strain constant. So I hold the strain, I deform it, I hold the strain for 10 seconds while I ramp the temperature down. That's the second segment. The third part is I have the temperature now at room temperature again, and I unload it uh, with a constant strain rate till I get zero stress. So that's how I'm supposed to lock in the deformed state, the memory of the material in this case. So that's the, that step. Step four is that then just holding it constant at zero at room temperature let it sit on the table basically no deformation applied no stress applied and we let the material relax if it wants to and then i do this temperature ramp the external uh, environment change that i'm interested in will this material recover now when we increase the temperature from 20 to 60 degrees c so in the intermediate temperature of interest and then finally the final step here is to keep that uh, stress zero and look what happens so all the whole time here we have zero stress i ramp the temperature up and then i just hold um, that zero stress at that higher temperature and um, to see what's happening and that's that's kind of the the temperature cycle that i want to apply here we'll see what happens when we apply this uh, for this temperature dependent bergstrom boys material model and here are the results. It looks really interesting. So this is stress strain. The stress goes up. Then we ramp down uh, temperature and it goes up and this and that. It's kind of easier to understand how, what's going on here if you plot this in a little different way. So I'm going to set up the graph a little differently. Uh, on the x-axis time, y-axis strain. On this figure here, I'm going to do x-axis time and y-axis Stress. So here is the cycle, the whole cycle. We, we load it up and then we have zero stress the whole part at the end. So what's interesting here is, are these two plateaus. So this is the plateau. We apply 50% strain and then we unload it and then we have about 20% residual strain at room temperature after that cycle. And then once we in, increase the temperature again, the material sits there, the specimen sits there, a lot of recovery occurs. It goes from about 20% strain down to about 5% strain. So it's a pretty substantial uh, memory effect that occurs in this material during the final heat cycle. So this, of course, depends on the material model parameters and how much of this recur recover during the cycle. So this was one example. I'm going to show you another example where we have a little bit more of this uh, memory effect. So I'm going to open that file. And here's the, the second file. I'm going to switch that over. Well, let's just plot the stress strain predictions for this material model. The same material model, but it has different parameters to it. And it looks pretty much similar in terms of the temperature effect here and the monotonic followed by unloading uh, cycles. What we're more interested in, in for demonstration purposes is the, um, the temperature cycle. So I have a shape memory polymer cycle. It's the same as last time where we ramp temperature up and down at various strain and stress levels. I'm going to plot this similarly to last time. Uh, well, let's keep it this way. So strain versus time. We'll see in this case, um, we have a, after the, the, the deformation followed by unloading uh, and the cool down, we have a much higher residual strain in the specimen, about 35% strain left, and then we applied 50, and we have a very substantial recovery of that. So it's a very substantial shape memory effect for this particular material model. Of course, I didn't show you any experimental data here. A lot of the science goes into creating these materials to have a lot of shape memory behavior in real life. The point here is that it's very easy to explore these types of behaviors using M calibration. You can create the shape memory cycle that you're interested in. And by using a temperature dependent viscoelastic, viscoplastic material, you can capture these effects very easily. You can simulate these effects in any geometry that you're interested in. So this is kind of cool, and it just shows how easy it is to explore these things if you have experimental data or if you're trying to design a material that has certain behaviors, you can tie that 
into these parameters that I talked about here. I'm not going to go through exactly my selection of parameters, but you can explore these parameters by hand by changing them and then running it again. You can see how you maximize the shape memory effect, etc. What aspect of the stress to incur perhaps at different temperatures that gives you the response that you're interested in for your specific application. And uh, if you have any questions about that, you can ask them below.